How are you, my friends? In this uh, video, I'm presenting seven old exams questions related to double angle and half angle formulas. And they are coming from lectures 23 and 24. Question number one, find the exact value of three tan, three pi over eight, divided by two minus two tan squared, 3 pi over 8. Now it's very obvious here that this question, this expression here is similar to tan of 2 theta. So we have to make some arrangements until we get the formula, then we can continue from there. Now in the solution first, we put the formula of tan 2u, which is 2 tan of u divided by 1 minus tan squared of u. So I have to make the given here similar to the right side, exactly similar. Then I can go back and use tan the double angle. So listen here, three, there is no three in the formula. So I took the three just outside there. See, three times. In the denominator, we have, we have a common factor here too. So I put it in the bracket, one over two. In, in the formula, there is a two, so I have to put two there in the question, but I cannot put two like that because I will be changing the question. So I have to compensate and put half because this half here times the two, see two times the half, that's one. So it means I did not change the question. Now look at this, two times tan of this angle, three pi over eight, all is u. 1 minus tan squared, the u here. So all this, all this big expression here, tan to u. See, if I go back there. And here we have 3 over 4. I have to leave it in the answer. So 3 over 4 times tan 3 pi over 4. When you multiply here by 2, cancel 2 and 8 becomes 3 pi over 4. Now we know 3 pi over 4 is in quadrant 2. And by using the reference angle, pi minus 3 pi over 4 is pi over 4. And there is a minus because the tan is in quadrant 2 negative. So that's minus 1. See, all this tan 3 pi over 4 is minus 1. Multiply by this, you get minus 3 over 4. Now let's express cosine of 3x in terms of cosine x. So there is no formula we know about cosine 3x. So I can start by saying cosine 3x is cosine 2x plus x. And then I use from lecture 21 cosine of the sum here. Cosine of u plus b will be cosine of u, cosine of b minus sine of u, sine of v. I just apply that for 2x and x and then I proceed. Cosine 2x, cosine x. You can read please sine minus here there's a minus in the formula sine of 2x sine x now cosine of 2x i can replace it by there are three formulas actually in cosine of 2x so i can choose the one that has cosine of x it will be 2 cosine squared of x minus 1 multiply by this sine of 2x there is one formula only 2 sine x cosine x multiply by sine x then this would be sine squared. Here we distribute cosine multiplied by cosine squared of x times two. So it will be two cosine cubed of x minus cosine of the x minus this one here. So the only thing we have to change is sine squared of the x, which is one minus cosine squared of the x. Now this one is there, this one is there. Multiply minus 2 times the 1 times the cosine of x. Minus 2 times the minus becomes plus 2. And there is the cosine of x becomes cosine cubed. Combine here like terms. So the final answer will be 4 cosine cubed of the x minus 3 cosine of the x. Now question number 3 is really nice because we have an expression on the left side here. Sine power 4 of x minus cosine power 4 of x divided by cosine of x times secant of x minus sine of x plus cosine of x all squared. We need to make this one 
equals m cotan nx. Then we add m plus n. So let's start. Now we can see in the numerator here, we have to factor. So it becomes sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x. Difference between two squares, sine squared of x minus sine squared of x. We know this one is one here, so I can just leave one. This one, I leave it there, sine squared of x minus cosine squared of x, leave it. Now we know cosine and secant, they are reciprocals. See, cosine of x, secant of x, cosine of x, and the secant will be one over cosine of x, so that would be one. So I put all this here in the denominator, that's one, minus. Now I have used, I have used the formula here, sine of x plus cosine of x squared as a plus b all squared. So sine squared of x plus two sine of x cosine of x plus cosine squared. The first and the last term becomes one plus two sine of x cosine of x, which is here sine of two x. But remember there is a minus here in the denominator. So one minus one, that, that would be zero minus two. So we have minus here and this one by the formula of double angle sine of 2x. Also here we have sine squared of x minus cosine squared of x. We know cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x is cosine of the double angle. So just take a minus common factor. So that will be minus out cosine of 2x. Now minus and minus will be canceled. Cosine of 2x over sine of 2x becomes cotan of 2x. See, just compare it now with this. So M will be the coefficient of the cotan, which is one, and N the coefficient of the X, which is two. So M plus N will be three. Now given the function minus six cosine squared pi over six X minus one, we need the maximum, the minimum. That means we need the range and the period is capital D. Now remember this is cosine squared. So you have to change this to cosine. How do we do that? Lowering power. Remember lowering power, LP2, cosine squared of theta, one plus cosine, you lower the power here, and then this theta becomes double angle, two theta over two. So minus six I leave, you see, okay. Cosine squared, See, this is cosine squared of this theta, see? One plus cosine two theta over two, and this minus one, I leave it. Now, what is the theta here? All this will be the theta, you see? Pi over six X, that's the theta there. Now simplify that, minus six divided by two here, so that's a minus three. In the bracket, all this numerator, one plus cosine pi over three X, and there is a minus one. Now multiply with minus three there. So minus three, or minus three also cosine pi over three X minus one. You can add minus one minus three, you get minus four minus three cosine pi over three X. Now, this is the same function, but here we have cosine function. So let's go to lecture number 16. To find the range, we need the range there. From the range, we find minimum and maximum, and we need the period. Now the range for sine and cosine function, d minus absolute value of a, d plus absolute value of a. d is the shifting up or down, which is minus four here. And a by itself is minus three, but we have to have absolute value. So minus four minus three, minus four plus three. So the range becomes from minus seven to minus one. So the max is the minus one and the min is minus seven. Now the period is two pi over K. Remember K is the coefficient of the X here. So capital D is the period. That's the formula for the period. Two pi over K pi over three. So two pi over one multiplied by the reciprocal, three over pi becomes six. So let's multiply minus one, minus seven and six, which is 
42. Now here we have cosecant of minus alpha is equal to three and tan of alpha is positive. Let's find the value of tan half angle plus cotan half angle. All right, let's see. Cosecant of minus alpha is equal to three and we know cosecant is odd function. So the minus can go out. Cosecant of alpha is equal to three. Multiply with minus and now find the reciprocal. So from this, we can find sine alpha minus one over three, y over r. Let's find x as we did many times. So x squared is eight. So x will be minus two square root of two. Why is that? The angle alpha lies in quadrant three. Why it is in quadrant three? Look at the given. Tan is positive, so either quadrant one or three. And we have here cosecant. From there we found sine of alpha negative. So for sure alpha is in quadrant three. So from there, we can find cosine of the alpha x over r. That's the value there. Tan alpha over two, we have three formulas for tan half angle. I will choose one minus cosine of alpha over sine of alpha. Whatever formula you use for tan alpha over two will give you the same answer. So one minus, look at the, the minus here, one minus, and the cosine is already minus there, minus two square root of two over three sine of alpha is also minus one over three. So this we can combine the fraction three and there is two minuses plus two square root of two. Then we can cancel the three and there is a minus one. So tan alpha over two, be careful there is minus three minus two square root of two. Now we need cotan alpha over two, which is the reciprocal. See this one, one over that. Let's continue. So the cotan alpha over two, one over minus three minus two square root of two, we need to rationalize, multiply up and down by the conjugate and simplify the numbers. So cotan alpha over two becomes minus three plus two square root of two. So when you add cotan alpha over two plus tan alpha over two, you get minus six. Now, this is a simple question maybe. Five sine four theta times cosine four theta is equal A sine B theta. We need A and B and we need to add them. So first we have to remember, this is a product of sine and cosine. So I can remember this formula, two sine of U cosine of U equals sine two U. So if I have this, I can go back. So let's see, five is not in the formula. So I just leave it here aside. This one here, sine of something times sine, cosine of something, we need two there, so I can put two. And to compensate this two, I put half, because I cannot just put two in the question, I will change the question, which is wrong. So I put two and half, two and half, if you multiply them, you get one. So you are not changing the question. So now five over two and two times sine of u cosine of u. Just remember here, I put four theta to make it easy. I put four theta as u. So I have now two sine of u cosine of u. Just look here, go back, go backward. So this becomes sine two u. And there is five over two outside, remember. Sine two u, I know u is four theta. So I put back here, two times four theta becomes sine five, eight, two times four is eight theta and five over two is the coefficient there. So A now, if you compare it, A will be five over two. And the B here is the coefficient of theta is eight. So let's add them. So LCD here is two, 21 over two is A plus B. Now this is a really nice question because of that one here, sine four theta, something important. Cosecant of minus theta is square root of six and secant of theta is positive. Find sine four theta. Now, 
from cosecant of minus theta is equal to square root of six, and this is an odd function. So I can say minus cosecant of theta is equal to square root of six. From this, I can find sine theta, the reciprocal minus one over square root of six, y over r. Then I can say x squared plus y squared is equal r squared. Put all the numbers and then x squared will be five. So x will be plus or minus square root of five. I choose the plus y. Theta lies in quadrant four. How do I know that? Look at the given. Secant of theta is positive. That means the cosine is positive. So the x is positive. And from here, y is negative. y negative, x positive, for sure. Theta lies in quadrant four. So the cosine will be plus. Cosine of theta, x over the r, square root of five over square root of six. Now listen here, sine to u, two sine u, cosine u, whatever here, the double angle. Sine for theta, it becomes two, see the same formula here, two sine two theta times cosine two theta. So to find sine for theta, you have to write two, sine two theta, that's double angle. You have to find the formula for that, which is here, two sine theta, cosine theta. Remember there is another two outside here. Cosine two theta, you can find the formula for cosine two theta and find the value. Maybe a little lengthy question. Yes, so there is a two there and two sine theta, cosine theta is inside two sine theta cosine theta multiply two and two becomes four and then for cosine two theta we have three formulas cosine of double angle so i have chosen one minus two sine squared of the theta so i know sine of the theta minus one over square root of six you square it see now we have to be careful about the fractions and the calculation here so this is plus one over six and there is a two there. So that's one over three, one minus one over three, two over three. And then you can cancel here the two with this two, three, nine. So the final answer minus four square root of five over nine. Now here are the answers of the seven old exams questions. For other examples, please, you can see the uh, videos, pre-calculus course, lecture 23 double angle formulas and lecture 24 half angle formulas thank you for watching if you like the video you can subscribe and share it with your friends i hope i can see you in another video with another topic thank you for listening